This video is brought to you by the Basic eSales Bookkeeping Spreadsheet, bookkeeping designed for eBay sellers by an eBay seller. Keep track of inventory, sales, expenses, and have everything ready at tax time. See the description area below for the link and the discount code for 25% off. Thanks for watching. I've known Tina for a couple years, I think, and I've chatted with her on the phone before, so she's real entertaining, so I, I think y'all will enjoy this, this interview. So, say hi, Tina. Hi, <laughs> everyone. Thanks for having me, Suzanne. Sure, I'm glad we could arrange this. Um, tell me again where you're yeah. located. What state are you in? I'm in Tennessee. Okay. Middle part of Tennessee. Middle Tennessee, right. Okay, good. And... Let's just kind of go through some of the standard questions, and I'm sure we'll go off on all kind of tangents. But um, how did you get started on eBay? I started eBay back in 2004 after I'd suffered some injuries and I couldn't return to my job. I ran a business that was, uh, I was within the fashion and the beauty industry. And I started exploring different ways to work from home. And during that period, I ran across an article about two women in New York City that had teamed up to start a eBay business, and they were selling uh, high-end uh, clothing items, and they have been very successful, and I thought, well, that, that's a great idea, and I didn't really think about the physical involvement. I just kind of dove into it and spent the first couple of months actually doing research on eBay and their policies so I knew you know, I wanted to do everything legally within eBay's policies. And mm -hmm. So I started out doing that and started out selling clothing that I wouldn't be wearing to my job any longer on eBay. And, you know, I had to make some adaptions to uh, my physical needs, but I was able to do that. And then later I was in a car accident and was actually paralyzed from the chest down. Oh. So... <laughs> I had to drop eBay for a while and make some more adjustments to physical needs, and I picked it back up. And um, so far, it's worked for me as long as I, you know, pace myself. But it, it's a great way for anyone that wants to either keep busy or work when they can no longer uh, work outside their home. And uh, just about anyone can do it. So you um, said that you me. have an, an autoimmune issue and then um, you're paralyzed also. No, actually I had had uh, some surgeries on both of my shoulders and my arms could no longer, uh, the doctors, I couldn't do what, what I had been doing all of my life. So but they wouldn't let me return to work Okay. without doing further damage and then it was... I think it, that was in 2004, and then three years later, in 2008, four years later, I was in a car accident uh, on the way home from shopping, actually, oh. and, um, and was paralyzed from the chest down in that accident. So I, I think God was just saying, let's see how much Tina can take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in a wheelchair, and... And because our home is two levels, I have to live on the first floor, and my office was on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So we had to make a lot of changes for me to, to pick eBay up again. And uh, we, we've done that, and we're still making changes. We're working now to on an elevator that will get me back to the second floor and back to my office. Isn't that one of the... Isn't that one of the things that your eBay money is kind of paying for, is working towards that yes. elevator? It is. It is. See, it I, I just am so amazed at people like you because, you know, there's a lot of sellers out there that are making money to go to Disney or, um, you know, things like that where, and then here you are, you know, limited in what you can do and, and you're making money to buy an elevator. I mean, that just puts everything into perspective, you know. Yeah. It yeah. really does. Um, so what kind of items do you sell at this stage in your business? At this stage, I've been working with mostly American Girl dolls 
done with uh, a few coach handbags. That's most of my focus from here until the end of the year will be on the American Girl dolls. And um, I, I also carry their clothing, their furniture, all the accessories, anything for an 18-inch doll. And I have some clothing items in my eBay store. Uh, I have a little bit of everything, really. I have some sewing patterns. You know, there's a, there's, there's a little bit of, of everything, but my main focus is on the American Girl dolls. So I would imagine you stay away from big items that are, you know, difficult to package because I I can use my legs and I don't like packaging a lot of things, you know, having to bend down and stoop over and wrap things up, you know, it gets hard. Well, you would think that I would, but I sometimes forget my limits <laughs> and I'll order a dollhouse that weighs 40 pounds. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and sell it but I have a great partner in my husband so he, he takes all of the packages I like my packages delivered to the post office so that I know they got there and uh, he does all of that and, and he's a great assistant so so we managed to get even the heavy stuff out the door well good for you I <laughs> <laughs> I, I shipped a vacuum cleaner one time and that, and that was it one time only on that so, you know, as you go through this business, everybody does. You learn what you don't like to work with. Um, yeah, I love a challenge, though. Well, I couldn't do it without him. I have to say that. If I didn't have my partner, then I couldn't do it. Well, that's great that you have someone so supportive. Uh -huh. um, so what's interesting about Tina's business is how she gets the items to sell. And we're not going to tell you exactly what she does. But um, if you could explain a little bit about since... Uh, I mean, I imagine you could go thrifting, but it's probably a huge ordeal. You have to have help, you know, getting there and all that. Um, so you do most of your sourcing online for used products. Yeah, actually, I don't leave my home except for doctor's appointments because it's just too difficult. Mm -hmm. And I do everything online. And I source online much like you would in a brick and mortar and do much of the same things you would do if you were shopping at a brick and mortar. I look for deals, I look for coupons, I look for sales, clearance sales, and I look for pre-owned items. And there's, you know, several ways you can do that online. Craigslist is one of them. eBay is always a good place to source that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And if I buy a pre-owned item, I completely restore it. Many times I will send it to uh, American Girl has a doll hospital. And they're really serious. About oh my dollars. gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more of an investment for the item, but since it is a high end doll, these dolls usually aren't under $100 uh, per doll. And some of the older dolls that have been retired and no longer available can run up to $500. So sometimes it's a good investment to send them to the hospital mm -hmm. and pay to have the restrung or a new head put on them if they have any, in other words, if their eyes won't open and close properly or the hair is too dried out, um, I will do that. Sometimes they're, they're not too bad and I can actually restore the hair myself and and do actual, the restoring, you know, on my own and, and then get all of their, uh, each doll that is a Girl of the Year doll has their a special outfit that they were sold with and if you can like these items and sell it all together it's much more valuable mm -hmm. than if you break it down so if you can a lot of times I'll buy the doll and then I have to buy all the little stuff that goes with the doll and oh. then I'll sell it in a package and that makes it easy on the mom because she doesn't have to get out and hunt all these different little things well, and oftentimes I can save the mom a lot of money. And that's always important to a mom. Oh, absolutely. Oh, de no, definitely. Yeah. So how did you know anything about American Girl dolls before you got into eBay, or is this just something you figured out? I did not. My granddaughters taught me about American dolls, American Girl dolls. Okay. And how much they cost. And I thought, you know, I, I saw the demand on eBay, and I noticed that the supply didn't necessarily, 
outweigh the demand as it does in so many categories. Mm -hmm. But with American Doll, it it's merchandise you have to be willing to put the extra time into. There's a lot of research involved in which doll it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's also a unique customer base. Uh, there are American Doll, uh, American Girl Doll fans that are my age and all the way down to parents that buy them when their child is born and start the collection at that age. And they collect each doll of the year. And these shoppers can be very particular about what they receive in the mail on their purchase. So, so it's a, uh, it's a time-consuming item. I would say that about it. Well, I agree but with I, you I, on the I, the um, part about they're very particular because I did try to sell some American Girl dolls on consignment, and. Um, we got so many questions, you know, these little picky questions that I'm like, why are they being so nitpicky about all this? You know, what does it matter? And then we learned that this is just something it's, it's kind of close to, you know, stamp collecting or coin collecting where there's just all these details that you have to know, um, which I don't want to scare people listening. Cause one of the reasons I'm interviewing people who have very specific niches like Tina, um, is so they can share some general information with us because if you're already, let's say you're in goodwill and you're looking in the plush and the, the dolls and plush and stuff, um, you may not know to look for American Girl dolls or the clothes or the accessories. And, um, you know, it's just another thing that's right there in front of us, especially well, what I've noticed is in the more affluent areas of Atlanta, in those stores, you will find somebody just gave one of these away, just donated it. And so if you know enough to even, you know, look for it and pick it up cheap and then do a little bit more research, um, that can be a pretty good flip. Yes. So, um, the profit with the American Girl dolls. So for somebody that has never done these before but doesn't want to, you know, leave money on the table if they're already looking at toys or they're in the Goodwill and want to uh, branch out on their knowledge, what are a few basic things that you would say that they could look for? Look for soft hair and look for the legs to be tight enough that the dog can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. Look for the dog to be clean, as you know, as clean as it can be. They can be cleaned up really nicely with a, oh, what are they called? Magic... Um, magic eraser. Magic eraser. Mm -hmm. Those work great if they're damp. Um, be careful with doing their hair. If you do wash their hair, make sure you don't get anything on the wig cap. Do not put fabric softener in their hair. It will mold. Oh, you know, I see that product. little that little life hack all the time of mixing up fabric softener and I think Joy or Dawn or something. And but yeah, you're don't saying do that. don't do that. Don't do that because it'll eventually it can mold in the hair. Ooh. The best thing to do is use wig products. You know, treat it like you found a uh, Let's say you found a Chanel wallet. Mm -hmm. Treat that doll like a Chanel wallet because it is a high-end doll. And if you ship someone a $100 doll and it's dirty or it doesn't, its eyes don't open and close properly, or you tossed it in the box carelessly to ship it, the customer is probably not going to be happy because they're expecting high-end service with this high-end doll. And uh, go on the internet. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how to clean them up mm -hmm. and how to fix their hair back to the original style even. And research which doll you have. That's very important. Research that. And there's a website, a wiki website, just for American dolls where you can go and, and do your research. That was my next question. And I'll get that link from you and put it down in the description area below the video. Um, you know, places to point people where, where to start their research. Um, so what is the highest price you ever sold an American Girl doll for? Let's see, about $425, $425. And how much did you buy it for to flip it? I paid 
anywhere between, I know what I pay for them in general, anywhere between 120 and 150 Oh, so that's, that's that good. Page. Yeah, I do and see these. one doll that I'm in search of that I've, I've got the meat outfit for her. The meat outfit is what they're sold in, the outfit they're sold in. But I have not found the doll within my budget yet, mm -hmm. what I'm willing to spend to flip the doll. And, and that's part of the excitement of something like this. You set a doll to find this item or that item. And, and because it, it, uh, it, it brings a lot of money. She sells for around five hundred dollars. Wow! You don't have to do very many of those a month to have some good income. No, but they're just, they're really hard to find. They didn't make very many of her, so they're they're hard to find, and especially at a at a good price. Most people realize what they have with that one. Yeah, so, especially so, that's another reason. if it's the mom to, selling uh, it. If if it's the mom I mean, selling if it's the mom selling it who bought it for their child they know what they paid. <laughs> typically, typically, and sometimes you run across people that don't research before they sell them. You'll find them in yard sales, and that you know that's another great place to look for them are yard sales. And um, yeah, typically, but you always do want to make sure which doll you have. That's very important as far as the, the price point. And even with the clothing, if you happen to luck into some American Girl clothing mm -hmm. or uh, Pleasant Company, which was the company before they sold to American Girl, and the older, typically, the more valuable it is because those are collector's items. Do you know when they started making these dolls? Like, what's the oldest? Are they vintage yet? I want to say it was the early 80s. Okay, Sorry. so there would be some vintage ones still out there. Um, yeah, they're considered vintage for sure, and collector, collectibles. Do they have so the dates? You know, if you wanted to, you could go into three different categories. Uh -huh. Do they have the dates on the like on the back of the neck or anywhere on them so you would know what you have? They do not, and, and that's an area where a lot of sellers, that's a great question, because a lot of sellers get mixed up and they think the date on the tag or the numbers, I'm sorry, on the tag, they, they think that's a date, and that's not. It's a serial number. Oh. It has nothing to do with when she was made. So, no, they're not stamped by date, but you can go to the American Girl Encyclopedia and, and figure out, you know, what, what the date they were made and when they were retired and that type of information. So did you ever think that when you got to be this age and a grandma, you'd still be playing with dolls all day? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I thought my daughter would, but not me. She's 40 years old, and she never plays with them. <laughs> I beg her to. Don't you want to do their hair? <laughs> but, you know, you're really rehoming these things to someone who's going to appreciate it and love it because I know the collectors just, you know, they're very passionate about their, the things they collect, and these dolls are, are like people. You know? It's so exciting to sell these dolls because they're selling somebody that is excited anyway. And they're so happy when they get them, especially the children. Mm -hmm. I love working with the children. You know, that's one thing I miss about working outside my home was, you know, every day I could make someone happy or help someone. And, right. And so this is a great way to, to kind of channel that energy back out. So I do love it. So back to all the particular questions, uh, what are some of the weird uh, weird questions you might get if you're selling an American Girl doll? I think the number one question is, do you smoke? Does it smell like smoke? Oh, of course. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, Other than someone trying to get it for less money. We were talking eBay here. <laughs> the number one question. Yeah, I bet if they tell I you... I like those. I like the longest descriptions on eBay that there is, so I'm trying to think if I do get very many questions. How quick can you get it here? My daughter's birthday is tomorrow. I get a lot of rush orders. Uh, questions. Well, I want to know if the hair is soft or if it's dried out, if the doll is clean, if there's any floaters. Are the limbs loose? And basically they're asking if the legs are loose. Okay. Or the arms but uh, I really don't get a lot of questions. Well, you probably have 
anticipated their questions because you've done this so often, you already know what to put in your listing. I try to. You know, I, I started eBay back in the day when your description had to, um, your description had to read like you did not have any pictures. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, back in the day when we wrote, you know, we, we wrote an essay for our description. Well, if you, so I'm, yeah. I'm cutting back, but, but yeah, I try to be, you know, I try to get as many specifics as I can about the dog. And I actually try to get some history on the dog. You try to get some what? Some history. Oh, history. I get some history on, on okay. the older dogs and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you sell, or actually, do you ship international? I do. I love shipping international. I do. Do you s do. do many of these dolls go internationally? They do because there there are no American doll stores there, and American Girl is they're very uh, limited in their international shipping. Mm. So I do. I've shipped to Russia. Wow. And uh, a lot of times I'll get a message from the mom telling me I must stay like the doll, and that's really cool. Uh, I shipped uh, a doll outfit to an Olympic stalker team in Qatar. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Last Christmas. This was last November, I think. And, uh, yeah. That was interesting. So, you know, there's been some interesting uh, sales. Oh, okay, so if they're not shipping internationally, definitely they're missing out on opportunities there. I think regardless of what you sell, unless maybe it's something in incredibly heavy, mm -hmm. and I would have to go do, uh, I would have to go look at the, the cost before I would actually say but. I think if you're not doing international, you're missing out on not only money, but an experience. Mm -hmm. Because these customers are buying something that they probably can't get in their country. And they're super excited usually to get it. And I have to say, my international customers throughout my eBay career have just been amazing. So uh, I encourage everyone to do international shipping. It's not hard. eBay lays it out how to do it, mm -hmm. how to help and contact and how to ship international. And step by step, it, it's easy. You've got some great material on shipping internationally. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'll put a link to that, too. Um, I was going to say that I've, yeah. I've done it since I started just because, you know, when I started, I had lost a job and gone through a divorce, and I needed money to live on. Yeah. And I'm like, anything I can do to make more money, I'll learn it. it. You know, I'm not, I wasn't scared of anything. I'm like, they're just people that live somewhere else that want to buy something. So, you know, I, I didn't yeah. worry about it. And I've, I've done it the whole entire time I've been on eBay. And um, I agree with you that international customers are usually just a delight to work with because they are so happy that you've, you will work with them. Um, they get, you know, the door slammed in their faces a lot because people won't ship to international uh, locations, and it's mostly because of the seller's own fear. It has nothing to do with the, them being a problem cu problem customer. It's the seller's own fear getting in their way. So, um, you know, in Australia, Australia, it, it can take a month for stuff to get there, and th they'll put in the feedback, "Thank you so much, fast shipping." <laughs> And it's like <laughs> they're used to it taking a really long time. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. Americans will be, you know, they'll buy something on Saturday night and they didn't get it by Monday. And they're like, why haven't you shipped it yet? You know, <laughs> it's like this, there's not the same sense of urgency in other countries. They know that it's going to take a little while. Yeah, they're accustomed to, to the time and they're accustomed to the fees that they, they get once the package arrives in their country. And what I do, Suzanne, that that they also appreciate, and I'm not saying anyone else should do this, this is just what I do. I receive, because I'm a top-rated seller, I get that discount on my shipping, and once I have the item shipped, I refund them back the, the discount. Oh, that's and nice. any other overage, because the calculator, the shipping calculator, has a tendency to go a little high versus a little low, which you want that. You'd rather go high than low and not lose money, but... Uh, I'll refund them with a little message saying that I hope that helps with their custom fees. 
right. you know, wish it were more, something sweet like that. And they really appreciate that. And it does help with their custom fees. And it doesn't cost me anything to do it. Uh, so that's a, a good way to keep that international customer loyal, which always helps your business. Absolutely, yeah. Because especially if they're a collector, um, you know, they may be back to buy more from you. Or, or watch. Yes, a lot of times they do come back. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the accessories. Um, are there any that you would say are better to sell than others? I I messaged you a few weeks ago about a American Girl doll horse I saw on a Facebook yeah. group, and I I was like, I don't know anything about this. I wonder if Tina could look at this real quick and just tell me like yay or nay on this. Ha ha, nay for the horse. <laughs> Um, <laughs> hey, for the horse. I have to go do some research to find out because I'm, I don't know the horses that well. And there are some horses, if you had had the right horses, had, you could have made a lot of money. Yeah, but you and didn't. I, I, you I have was. You your whole everyday horse in the stable. I was lazy, and I said, well, Tina could probably look at this and tell me in two seconds. So I did not follow my own rule of doing research before asking, but hopefully. You're my friend, and so I just sent you a quick message. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. You know I love networking. That's my favorite part. Um, um, but, yeah, if you had had the right horse, it, it would have been white with black spots on it, and it would have been worth more money. But And, and that's the key with, with an item, a collectible, to say, you know, a collectible. It depends on what it is and, and right. the supply and the demand. That's always you know, the, the factor there. But, um, yeah, in that case, I didn't advise you get it because for the work you would have possibly needed to put into it, but the horses have actual hair on them. It's, mm -hmm. Well, it's not real hair, but, it, you know, it's fake hair, and it can be really dirty. You know, the kids have been playing with it, mm -hmm. and you have to stamp through them, which entails, you know, if you want to do it right, that's an that you got to make a little investment and go buy the wig shampoo and the wig conditioner. And you know this, with any item you buy to, to sell it for profit, you have to consider everything you have to put into it, the labor, any products you might need. So just quickly through my, you know, my thought process there was you're going to put a little more into it than you're cooking out. Right, of. right, absolutely. Well, it, it's horse. like flipping houses. You have to look at, you know, how much is it going to cost to fix all the things that are wrong with it before you can turn it over, um, you know, on a much smaller scale. But um, I appreciate you, you know, just saying, nah, pass on that one. Um, but I do see them pop up on Facebook, like buy and sell groups, because I'm always looking at, you know, stuff I can flip in my own community. And, um, yeah, there's lots of Facebook groups where moms and, and sellers, too, that have either never been on eBay or left eBay that sell American Girl items. So, so yeah, I have, in my research, I have found the groups actually be a little more expensive than what you can find on eBay because of auctions. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, a lot of sellers will find American Girl items at Goodwill, and they don't clean them or, you know, they just put them out there for sale. They don't put any further investment into them, and they sell them cheap. And that's a great way to, whether you have a child that wants one and you can't afford, you know, $150 for a brand new doll, it's a great way to, to buy a doll on eBay and then fix it up yourself if you're mm -hmm. a crafty kind of person. Have you ever bought a doll that was in bad shape just for the outfit she was wearing? Like some, uh, you know. I have bought a doll in bad shape for her body. Okay. <laughs> her body part. <laughs> and yes, I, I have bought a doll. Yes, as a matter of fact, I bought a doll that I would not have purchased, and I did send her to the hospital. But it was all about that outfit. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, the outfit was an overall outfit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but it's very, it is a very valuable outfit. Some of the outfits are $100. Yeah, well, I've heard of um, sellers that might find one in Goodwill and, you know, the doll's trashed and the little girl cut her hair and all these things. But she had on the right outfit or a valuable mm -hmm. outfit. So they just bought the doll and then took the clothes off and sold the clothes. Rule of 
song or advice for someone else. I don't shop thrift stores. If you find anything, American Girl, get it. Look on the aisles where they have little knickknacks that mm-hmm. sit around the home. I can't tell you how many people have found one of the dolls, say, crock pods or um, teacups or something that accidentally got placed over in the wrong section of Goodwill or Salvation Army, you know, where the clerk thought it was a knickknack and it oh, actually right. was part of the... Because with the accessories, there's typically a collection. Well, and In other words, there'll be two or three pieces that go to it, and if you can collect the entire piece, which also makes it fun to try to collect each piece to, the, to that collection and uh, resell it, you're going to make even more money. So the American Girl dolls are typically 18 inches tall? Eight, they're 18 inches tall. So it's much and bigger than a... store price is grab anything that says American Girl on it. Roll the dice. <laughs> okay, so it's much bigger than Barbie accessories. I mean, they're they're. It is bigger than Barbie, yes. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the accessories are going to be big enough to maybe be confused with human, <laughs> human kitchen stuff or whatever, and, and be right. on the little. The, I call them the junk aisles with all the the stuff. Um, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And so, do all the accessories say American Girl on them? Typically, or they'll have a little, the newer stuff might have a little sticker on it. But typically, on the bottom or somewhere on the piece, it will have American Girl stamped on it. Okay, okay. See, I didn't know, I didn't even know to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Well, in Barbie clothes, too, I mean, that's if they're vintage and the whole thing, they can sell for a lot of money, but they're so tiny that, you know, people our age don't want to look at that tiny stuff. <laughs> Get out your binoculars sure. to look and see what it is. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a question I ask everybody, but it's probably going to be a little bit different for you um, since your challenges are different. What is the most challenging part of selling on eBay for you? Well, of course, my, my most challenging part would be, be the paralysis and, and other injuries uh, on eBay. But, and, and with that, I really don't sweat the small stuff with eBay. I, I think eBay, it offers such an opportunity to me that I tend to stay more excited about it and, than finding it challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the most challenging things that, that any seller may face with eBay, not just myself, uh, would be the fact that, that with eBay, uh, it's a great partnership, but, but you're working within eBay's policies. Mm-hmm. And, and it's always important to keep that in mind and work your systems as a seller to their policies. And otherwise, you can get really frustrated when things don't go your way. Well, um, and another but, thing that you sell um, on eBay is designer handbags. Because you yes. you found a way to get them online or through different online connections, um, and can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with that? Um, I know people who follow me might know. I just I say don't do designer handbags at all because I'm I sort of have like well my sister says it's all or nothing with Suzanne. It's all or nothing, and I don't know that middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I got burned a couple times on things that I had receipts for and they were authentic and eBay said, nope, they're not. And my account got suspended for a week. And that was when all I was doing was eBay. And that was how I earned my living. So I said, this cannot happen again. I cannot be not able to work for a week or, or get kicked that's off. Right. So that's why I'm so adamant about just don't do it because you know, that would have been horrible. So what's going on? You've had some rough experiences lately in the designer handbag world on eBay. Yeah, well, like you have always warned sellers, when you sell a high-end item at a high price, you put yourself more at risk for people that want to take advantage right. of a return system and get something from nothing. And basically when the new 
the new return policy started with eBay back in June, I went from zero percentage in return to almost 10% in less than two months. I had returns coming at me, it felt like every day. And it, unfortunately, it was, it was buyers that wanted to take advantage of the system. Mm-hmm. And uh, in two instances, I was obviously damaged merchandise when the merchandise was returned. And you have to read eBay's return policy, item not as described, very carefully. If that customer can convince eBay the item is not as described, that customer will get their money back. eBay will work with you. They worked with me. But the realization of eBay is we have uh, a language barrier and a translation problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with the customer service people. So I think there again, as a business owner, and anyone that sells on eBay, you have to look at yourself as a business owner. You've got to be open to change, and you've got to be flexible, and you have to always understand eBay's point of view. Mm-hmm. I videotaped my item that was shipped, and it came back to me damaged, and although I had the videotape to prove it, eBay wasn't standing here with me, mm-hmm. so I couldn't really prove it, and I have to understand eBay's point there. I couldn't really prove it. So that was what you put in your spreadsheet as a loss. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> if you can't resell the item. But but I think it's just really important when eBay makes a policy change, the first thing to do, they announce it in plenty of time to do this, mm-hmm. go to that policy change and study it, memorize it, and make sure that you understand it because you'll never be able to change their policy. But you can change your system. Right. And alter your systems to match their policy. And if it means doing things in your listing to try to deter someone taking advantage of the return system, then see how those changes work for you. You know, that's what I had to do. I had to to implement a 20% restocking fee, and I'm hoping that uh, that's going to keep people like that away, buyers like that away. So do you think they switched a bag out on you, or did they actually damage it and want to return it? They actually took threads out of the stitching of the handle and returned it. Like, why would somebody do that? In my glasses, they took something and they scratched the lens. Why would and why would people it. damage it? I mean, like I intentionally. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've asked myself that too since that, it's actually happened to me three times now, and each time I've done, now one time I think they returned a different handbag, the very same style, but it, but I don't think it was the one I shipped. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why people do that. Well, I mean, I've heard of the whole switching a bag out, like ordering the same exact one, and then you send them back your old one, and, you know, you just got yourself a new bag. Or the um, the people who like to just have a new bag every couple of weeks, and they'll just get one and use it and then return it so they can get another one, um, which I have no problem with returns as long as it's returned in the same exact condition I sent it to you. I mean, I'm okay with, I change my mind on stuff all the time. I'm like the queen of returns in retail stores. <laughs> but I always, yeah, you know. it's unfortunate, but it is part of doing business. And if we owned brick and mortar stores versus working from home, uh, we'd be doing the shoplifting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'd be, well, do we spend money on security cameras to take care of this problem? But No matter where you do business, if you're in retail, which essentially that's what we're in, uh, you you have to allow for a certain amount of of theft. Yeah, it's it's loss. I mean, there's just a certain margin of loss in every business. You know, if you had a you had a bakery, you're going to throw stuff away every day. You know, stuff like that. You know, there's always some going to be some kind of waste. And um, you know, when folks get so upset about a return, you know. I don't do handbags like you, but, you know, 95% of what I get back 
I just resell it. It's not a big deal. Um, and you know, I do a lot of clothes, so there's fit issues or I, the color looked different when I got it or something like that. But, um, you just have to accept there's going to be some loss, but selling on eBay for your full-time job is so much better than working for someone else and having to sit in traffic and, you know, wear clothes you don't like or a uniform or you know, all the things that go with working for somebody else. Um, it's just a very small price to pay in my opinion. No, oh, okay. That's 15, 20 bucks, whatever. Move on to the sure. next one. Yeah. Sure. So and if you can make your, your policies specific to what constitutes an item not as described, then it makes it easier to work with eBay. Right. So, so that's what I mean when I say you can't change eBay's policies, but you can change your systems. And the hardest thing to do is keep your emotion out of it. Uh huh. And yeah. If you keep your emotions out of it. You got it. You can work through the problem. It may take a couple weeks, but you can work through the problem. Well, and you know, a lot of people do take it personally, and you have to remember the person you're dealing with. How they do anything is how they do everything. So if they're being rude, using That's profanity, right. you know, being ugly to you, they probably treat everyone like that. Don't take it personal just because you're an eBay seller. You know, they're probably, you know, mean to their coworkers or whatever. Um, that's just their attitude. You know, it's your karma is how you treat people. You know, that's all you can control is how what you do. How they treat you, that's their problem. So, you know, returns are just going to happen, and that's just the way it is. Um, but, yeah, you know, if you get emotional about it, go have a couple drinks, <laughs> Or, or go to the page called Mommy Loves and Vodka. I <laughs> I'm friends with Tina on Facebook, and she likes this page called Mommy Loves Vodka. And it's just hilarious, the stuff that's posted on that page. <laughs> I love it, and I don't drink. I know, that was the funny so part. You don't even drink. I'm just an all-day drunk. <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> Okay, well, one last um, question. What is your best advice for sellers who want to grow their business? And keeping in mind that Tina's been selling since 2004. So she's had a lot of years to evolve and figure things out. So what is your best advice? My best advice? That's a great question, too. You're full of them today. <laughs> uh, treat it like a business. Always be professional. Every time you answer a message, read that message back and see if that's the message you would want to get if you were having an issue or you had a question for a business, a shopping center or a clothing store or, you know, whatever, a restaurant. And try to think outside the box and always be thinking into the future. Mm -hmm. Think about where you want your business to be in six months, where you want it to be in a year, what do you want it to look like, what can you do to make it stand out from all the other businesses on eBay. That's hard to do. Mm -hmm. And research, research. Always know what's, you know, what's the latest, what are people buying, what are they thinking about, what are they going to want next year. And I think really the most important Part of being successful is customer service, mm -hmm. customer service, customer service. eBay is a service business. It isn't just it picking is. up stuff at yard sales and selling it. That's just mm -hmm. like the first step. You know, after that, yeah. it's all service. Yeah, if you always treat your customers like you want to be treated when you're out shopping or when you're spending your money, then you're, that's success right there. And Pay attention to your details, your presentation. When they open their box, put some presentation in it. Make mm -hmm. sure it's something where their eyes are going to... The last thing you want them to do is frown when they open your box. Right. And keep your inventory clean. Don't let the dust build up on it. Nobody wants to buy dusty stuff. And, you know, again, package it well. And remember, your customer is always right, even when they're wrong. They're still right. Mm-hmm. Try to remember that, you know. 
That's very good advice. And it, it takes a while to get to the point where you can be humble enough to say all these things because I think everybody has to go through a few, <laughs> a few, you know, getting slammed by customer experiences to say, you know what, I'm not all that. They can buy this from anybody else. I'm not special. That's right, they can. I'm just can. another person on eBay, and they can buy it from anybody else. So you have to really go above and beyond to get their business and get that good feedback. Well, I don't know if sellers realize how important good customer service is. And I think a great way to develop it is look at some business that you love that treats you great and use them for your business model. Mm -hmm. But it helps you with search. eBay takes note of people with good customer service, with good feedback, where the customers say things like, wow, that package looked great, or wow, my item was gift wrap. I gift wrap everything, even with the, it has a nice pretty ribbon on it. Oh, that's so I nice. Get, yeah, I guess that I get like leopard print, tissue paper. I want them to feel special when they open it. And eBay takes note of that. When I have a problem with eBay, they immediately note that I give good customer service, I ship fast, and I think it also helps in search. They're going to present the sellers that make the good presentations to mm -hmm. the customers. Well, yeah, that's, because that's it, it benefits idea. them to put the, the better sellers at the top of search because when buyers come, they're going to be presented with, here's the best we have to offer you at the top. You know, they're not yeah. going to put the crappy sellers who, you know, have policies like no returns no matter what and I only ship on Fridays because I'm busy. You know, who wants to buy from somebody like that? And I've seen listings like that. You know, there's there's better yeah. ways to say that, um, you know, I have six kids in homeschool and my husband travels and we only have one car. And unfortunately, I can only ship on Fridays. If you need something sooner, let's talk. You know, something like that rather than this is it or don't buy from me. And so if I was a yeah. customer, I'd be like, great, I'm not going to buy from you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to remember it's a partnership with eBay, and you've got to remember that it's their reputation and it's your reputation. Right. So, so if you if you ship in a cereal box, you're probably going to be at the bottom of the search engine. Yeah. <laughs> right. If your business is slow, take a good long look at it and see what may be the reason for that. Well, and I never and thought about simple. like keywords in the feedback comments being part of the search placement uh, criteria, but that's a very good point. You know, if you're constantly getting fast shipping, you know, good product, satisfied, you know, getting all those positive words, because you can still leave positive feedback, you know, it could be like, okay, or, you know, uh -huh. not with glowing reviews. Um, I didn't realize eBay's looking at that, but it makes sense that they would. Yeah, anytime you have an issue and they say, could you hold for just a moment while we look at your account? They're going to look at your feedback. They're going to look at your messages. And especially in a situation where it's the buyer's word against yours, mm -hmm. if they have done something, you know, unethical, then that gives you some credibility also right. as a business person. So I think it's very important to pay attention to all the details with the business. Well, you have just been a wealth of information today, and I really appreciate you taking some time out to talk and share some information with everybody. Um, I will put the links to the American Girl sites that you mentioned, the hospital, the dictionary, all that, that kind of information in the okay. description area. Um, and I guess if you have any questions for Tina, you can leave your comments here on YouTube in the comments section, and I will make sure that um, she comes back and, and chats with you. So thanks again for joining us, Tina, and... Um, I'm sure you're dying to get back to your eBay this afternoon. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Suzanne. Thanks. Bye. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye.